Hi there, welcome back to the fourth video in the IB Lanterna economics videos. Today we're going to be talking about elasticity, so let's get right into it. I think the best way to understand how elasticities work is by considering an example. So let's suppose you're a business owner and you're selling some good, let's call it good X. And you come to me and you say, hey, Freddie, I'd like to make more revenue, make more money on the sale of this good. What should I do? Should I lower my price or should I raise my price of this good X? Well, as you might be able to figure out, we need to know a bit more about the characteristics of this specific good or this specific market before I tell you to raise or lower your price. When you think about it, if you raise your price, you're going to get more money from each sale, but you're probably going to have fewer sales because consumers won't want to consume as many of that good. But if you decrease your price, you're going to get less money for each sale, but possibly way more people are going to be buying your good. So what should you do? Well, this is where price elasticity of demand comes in to help. Price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demand to changes in a goods price. So essentially it measures how many more or how many fewer people are going to be buying your good after you raise or lower your price. Now, on top of understanding the definition of price elasticity of demand, that it measures how much does quantity demand change when you change the price, we also need to understand a formula to calculate price elasticity of demand, because in economics, PED or price elasticity of demand is one number, right? So here is the formula, quite easy formula that we need to know for how to calculate PED. We say PED is equal to the percentage change. That triangle represents the Greek letter delta for change. So percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. So as you can see, it relates how much does quantity demanded change when price changes. Let's see how this works in an example. So remember I said previously that you're a business owner and you're selling good X. Let's say you're selling watches. And initially, our Q1, the amount that you sold at the original price, let's say that was 10 watches. And you were selling those watches at price P1 of let's say 10 euros, okay? And then you come to me and I suggest, hey, how about you decrease your price to eight euros? Well, what's gonna happen? Now that your watches are cheaper, we're gonna assume that your quantity is gonna increase. Let's say it increases to 15 watches. So at the new price of eight euros per watch, you're now selling 15 watches. Given this information, how do we calculate the PED? Now, this is something that you need to know whether you're an SL or HL. Even though SL doesn't do that much math in the econ course, this is one of those things that are applicable for both the SL and HL students. So in order to calculate PED, what do we need to do? Well, as you can see from our formula for PED, we need to know the percentage change in quantity demanded and the percentage change in price. How do we, given what we've been told, calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded and the percentage change in price? Well, we're gonna use this formula. To calculate the percentage change of anything, we're gonna take the new minus the old divided by the old times 100. That will give you the percentage change of anything. So let's calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded given the data that we've been told. The percentage change in quantity demanded will be the new quantity demanded, which is 15, minus the old quantity demanded, which is 10, divided by the old quantity demanded again, which is 10, and times all that by 100. Now, if you do that calculation, you'll get five divided by 10 times 100, which will work out to be 50%. So what's happened? Well, the quantity demanded has increased by 50%. Now, in order to calculate the PED, we need to do the same calculation for percentage change in price. So let's do that just below. Percentage change in price will be the new price, which is eight, minus the old price, which is 10, divided by the old price again, which is 10, times that by 100. What we get is negative two divided by 10 times 100, which works out to be negative 20%. 
So now we've calculated the percentage change in quantity demanded and the percentage change in price. Just one step left to get the final value for PED. Let's substitute it into our original formula. PED is equal to, if you remember, percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. So let's substitute our values in. We get 50% divided by negative 20%. And if you type that into your calculator, you'll get negative 2.5. So given our example, the value for PED is negative 2.5. This is how to do a basic calculation of PED. You've been given two different prices and the corresponding quantity demanded and using our formula for PED and using our knowledge of how to calculate the percentage change of price and quantity demanded, we're able to calculate the value for PED. Now, the first thing to note is that in our example, the value of PED is negative. Now, is this always gonna be the case? Well, the reason that it was negative was that when the percentage change in price was negative, or in more simple terms, when we decrease the price, the quantity demanded increased. A decrease in price led to quantity demanded increasing. So in that example, we have the denominator being negative and thus the fraction ended up being negative. Let's suppose we had the opposite example where the, instead of the price being reduced, we increase the price. Well, in that situation, we would have a positive percentage change in price, but we would get a negative percentage change in quantity demanded. Why is that? Well, as you increase your price, you're gonna get less quantity demanded. Fewer people will want to buy your watches. So what I'm saying is that no matter what, because we've got this inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, one goes up, the other goes down, we're always gonna end up with a negative value for PED. Now, because this value is always gonna be negative, typically economists like to report the final answer as the absolute value. So after we've calculated that in this example, PED is negative 2.5, a lot of people like to see that you write the last line being PED is this equal to 2.5, taking the absolute value of the number that you got. Next thing up is to understand what the size of the PED means. What does it mean for it to be 2.5? How is that different to it being say 0.5? And to understand that, we're gonna bring in these concepts, the PED being elastic or the PED being inelastic. Now we say that the PED is elastic when the PED is greater than one, whereas it's inelastic when the PED is less than one. So in our example, the situation I set up, because our value of PED when we calculated it was 2.5, that must mean that our PED was elastic. But what does it mean for it to be elastic? Well, if we set up our formula for PED again, PED is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. You might be able to spot that if PED is greater than one, if the number that we get is larger than one, it must mean that the numerator, the percentage change in quantity demanded, the amount by which the quantity demand changes is larger than the percentage change in price. The quantity demanded is changing by proportionally more than the price is changing. Now, how can we show that in an easier way? Well, let's set up a graph. And on this graph, let's put price on the y-axis, and quantity on the x-axis. And I'm gonna draw quite a flat demand curve, and you'll see why in a second. This demand curve is representing a very elastic demand curve. So let's suppose initially you set the price somewhere here. Price one, and this was your Q1. And then you lowered your price to P2. You can see the difference between P1 and P2 is minimal. There's a very small change in price. But what happens to the change in quantity? Well, the difference between Q1 and Q2 is massive in proportion, right? So what have we shown with this? Well, given this very flat demand curve, when you change the price by just a tiny bit, so a small percentage change in price, the percentage change in quantity demanded is massive. 
Now, what does that mean? Well, we're going to end up with a PED that's much greater than one, much larger than one. In other words, goods that have very elastic price elasticity of demand have very responsive consumers. If the price changes by just a tiny bit, the quantity demanded will change by a massive amount. The quantity demanded will change by a large amount. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have inelasticity, or the PED being less than one. Now, you might be able to figure out that if the PED is less than one, it must mean that the numerator, the top of that formula, is smaller than the denominator, right? The denominator is larger. The percentage change in price is larger than the percentage change in quantity demanded. Let's show that on a graph again. So I'll set up a y-axis and an x-axis. And we'll put price and quantity again. This time, I want to draw an inelastic demand curve. Remember, inelastic demand curve means that even with a large percentage change in price, the percentage change in quantity demanded is very small. How would I draw that? Well, I'm going to draw a very steep demand curve. Now, why does that illustrate an inelastic demand? Well, suppose your price was initially here at P1 with this quantity, Q1. And then you decide to increase your price. Let's suppose you increase your price by quite a large amount, all the way up till here. So the change in price is quite large. The percentage change in price is a large number. What's gonna happen to the quantity? Well, as you can see, the quantity doesn't change by much. So given this very steep demand curve that we've drawn, even with a large percentage change in price, we get such a small percentage change in quantity demanded. And going back to the formula, you can see that a large percentage change in price and a small percentage change in quantity demanded is going to lead to a PED that's less than one. So what is it that we really need to understand about elasticity at this stage? Well, first of all, we need to understand the definition of price elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded of a good to changes in its price. We also need to make sure we know the formula for price elasticity of demand and know how to apply it, both for SL and HL. Be able to do these simple calculations, being given a price, a quantity demanded, and a new price and a new quantity demanded. The most important part, however, is understanding here the difference between elastic and inelastic demand. Elastic demand implies that a small percentage change in price will lead to a massive percentage change in quantity demanded. In other words, consumers are extremely responsive to price changes. On the other hand, inelastic demand means that even if you change the price by a massive amount, the quantity demanded will stay almost the same. Consumers are not very responsive to price changes. In the next video, we're going to have a look at this in more detail and see examples of goods that might exhibit more elastic behavior or inelastic behavior and why that might be. So stay tuned for that.